Hey everyone and welcome to the Retro Channel and today we're looking at LumaCode for the Commodore 128. This is a solution that uses the original hardware plus a little add-on board and the RGB to HDMI project to give us pixel perfect HDMI output from a number of 8-bit systems. I've previously shown the Commodore 64 and the Atari 8-bit computers on the channel so uh, feel free to have a look at those. I did go into a bit more detail on uh, this whole project in the Commodore 64 video so check that out if you want to know more about it but uh, I think rather than repeating myself over and over, let's get this thing installed in the 128 and see how it goes. So let's get this thing opened up. I am using the Commodore 128 DCR, so it is the metal case version, but this does also work in the Commodore 128 flat and also the Commodore 128D, the plastic case version. But uh, the DCR was already out at the time, so let's use this one. Just got to get a few screws out. Uh, I'm pretty sure all the DCR versions don't have uh, RF shields in them, so that does at least make it easier because uh, for the 128 flat and the 128D, uh, you do have to deal with RF shields. But for the DCR, this should be completely solderless because we won't have to remove any RF shields. So. Sliding off the case reveals the insides and uh, yes, as you can probably see, there is one of my uh, RF replacement boards. This is actually a beta version of the version 2 board, which is coming out shortly. Uh, I've already released it to patrons, so um, they already have access to the Gerber files and everything. But yes, this version 2 board will replace the, uh, the current one that's out there. Um, this one obviously has a few resistors and stuff sticking up because I was still running tests at the time. But uh, I think the final version is now good to go. Um, like I said, patrons already have access to that. And speaking of patrons, I'd like to thank Mike Paul who recently joined the Captain Blood tier on Patreon. So thank you, Mike, and thank you to all my patrons. But if you do want to order version one, you can find it on our channel sponsor, PCB Way. Yes, PCBWay is a great place to find all kinds of shared projects from members of the community. And you can upload your own PCB designs, 3D prints, CNC machining, and let PCBWay handle the hard part while you kick back and wait for everything to arrive. So let's get the VIC-2E out of this board. All you need to do is just gently pry up on it on either side. I'm just using this little hook tool here, and we just wanna gently lift this out. Uh, obviously you've got a mains power supply here, so make sure you do this when the machine's unplugged, just in case. And with the VIC-2 3, we can stick it in our VIC-2 Dizer 128. That's a bit of a mouthful. Just making sure that we've got the notch on the chip lined up with the uh, notch on the socket and also line it up with the notch on the socket on the main board. Cool, that's it. We've got our two wires here. So on one side it says loom and on the other side it says ground. So red is gonna be our ground. Green is gonna be our LumaCode wire. We just need to stick this back in the board, making sure we get the pins in the right place. And of course, because this does raise the height of the VIC-2, you definitely want to get a heat sink on top of that VIC-2 because you won't be able to put the can back on top with this installed. Uh, so red was our ground wire. I'm just going to clip that to the case up here. That'll do for now. And the other wire, I'm just going to clip to my RF replacement board up here. And that'll give me LumaCode out of the uh, 3.5 mil RCA jack. Version two of the RF board will make it a lot easier to select either audio on both channels or LumaCode on one, or even composite video on one, whatever you like, a second SID channel perhaps. And there may also be a spot to hook up the HDMI out of the VIC-2 Quarry on version two. So um, yeah, a number of changes coming, but uh, like I said, it'll be a few weeks before we have a public release of that one. Anyway, let's try out this LumaCode. So I'm just going to use a little 3.5 mil adapter here, plug that in there and LumaCode should be on the right channel. So I'll just plug in our RGB to HDMI with the LumaCode board. And then we just need to prep the SD card for the Raspberry Pi. So over on the computer, we're just going to download the latest beta release of the RGB to HDMI project. I'll have links to all this stuff in the video description. Uh, and it looks like it's now up to beta 60. I'm pretty sure it was beta 59 uh, when I first went to film this video. Um, 
Yes, this is the second time I've done LumaCode for the 128 because uh, the first time didn't really work out that well. There was a little issue with uh, timing and clock phases on the 128 and the original LumaCode 128 board that I got wasn't working reliably with my machines. So uh, I did a bit of scoping and uh, sent those results over to Copper Dragon because he doesn't actually own a 128 and he worked out some optimal timings and sent me a replacement board. So uh, the LumaCode for the 128 should be good to go now. Uh, there is one other minor issue which I'll get into uh, once we actually have this thing up and running. So let's copy this over to our SD card. Uh, again, this is only in the beta release for the LumaCode stuff, but I guess it will get rolled into the main release at some point. Uh, but for now, you need the beta 59 or beta 60 now release to uh, get this up and running. Cool, and with that done, we can stick our SD card back in the Raspberry Pi, plug our RGB to HDMI into the Raspberry Pi, and make sure that's plugged into the computer, and plug in HDMI output, give this thing some power, and we can see the little info screen from the Raspberry Pi, so we should be able to just turn the machine on. Wait for that to disappear, and there we go. Pixel perfect HDMI from a Commodore 128. Completely jail bar free, finally. As far as I can tell, there is like basically zero lag. So um, yeah, I can't detect any. And uh, of course, if we do the thing that every Commodore 128 owner did, um, go 64, everything looks perfect. Now, of course, while I'm at it, I may as well grab one of the HDMI audio embedders so I can also have audio running through a HDMI cable. Um, that's just a workaround because obviously LumaCode doesn't carry audio signals, it's only video. Alternatively, you could just hook it up to, you know, something like powered speakers or a separate amplifier or something, but uh, having everything just running over a single HDMI cable is definitely preferable. Uh, so let me find one of the audio embedders wherever I put them. All right, our audio embedder is now part of the signal chain, so it's a bit of a mess of adapters back there, but uh, small price to pay. So let's try out some software and I'll also show one issue that uh, is unlikely to be fixed, but probably only affects maybe 0.01% of the Commodore 128 and 64 software library. So it's unlikely that you'll encounter it, but uh, it's worth mentioning. So if we load up a game that uses the two megahertz mode, which is a little trick where the 128 runs at two megahertz during the blanking periods because the VIC-2 can't run at two megahertz, uh, certain issues arise uh, with the LumaCode board. And unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a way that uh, it's gonna be an easy fix. So uh, it's not on the roadmap of fixes, but uh, again, it only affects a handful of games. Uh, let's just load up Uridium Plus because that is one of the ones that can run at 2 megahertz. So everything looks pretty normal on the title screen. If we start the game though, probably going to see some issues. Oh yeah, that mothership sort of thing looked a bit messy. And yeah, glitchy graphics. Yeah. So yeah, unfortunately it's a bit of a mess with uh, 2 megahertz mode games, but I think uh, Iridium Plus, Super Mario 64, and a couple of titles that were originally written for the Commodore 128, which are pretty much C64 titles like the last V8 128 and one or two others, uh, they won't work with the LumaCode. Uh, obviously you can still use the original uh, composite and S-Video outputs from the 128, they're still active, so you can always use them as a fallback. And uh, the 80 column mode uh, is obviously handled by the VDP, so it's completely separate from the VIC-2 and as such the LumaCode stuff. So um, yeah, that still works as normal, but uh, obviously isn't handled by LumaCode, so you still need to use a RGB I monitor or CGA as it's more commonly known uh, to actually view the 80 column mode stuff. So yeah, I think that is it for LumaCode on the Commodore 128. It works pretty much perfectly, apart from a handful of games, and uh, it's definitely a huge upgrade from the original 128 video output. So uh, I'm very happy with this, and uh, I think for now that's it for the LumaCode stuff. Uh, there is still 
the VIC-20 version, which I don't have, and on the horizon is a version for the 2600. Um, so we might take a look at those in the near future, but uh, as for now, I'm gonna kick back and play some games in uh, nice HDMI crispness. That's a good word, crispness. So um, thank you all for watching. A huge thanks to the people that support the channel on Patreon. And if you want to do the same, links to that are down below. You'll get ad-free, sponsor-free, early access videos, along with a bunch of other things like um, some more upcoming PCB projects that are in the works. So um, yeah, please do check that out uh, if you want to support the channel and help me make more videos like this. Uh, but until next time, thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.